Okay, we'll continue. Uh, Elior, what do you think about uh, this patient with chronic hip pain? Okay. Um, do we have, let's see, I'm looking at that superior labrum. I'm not sure that's a tear. It looks very smooth. I think that's a sub sublabral recess, maybe. Con chondrolabral junction defect, right? Yeah, it could be a tear, I guess. Mm. A little bit of a step off down here, maybe a little bit of coxavera. Mm. Okay. Here are some more images. Um, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, there's an aspherical femoral head. Um, and you can see it nicely here on the T1 oblique axial image. Mm -hmm. Here's the fecial scar. And, and notice you have a little divot right here. Mm -hmm. you can see that the epiphysis is shifted kind of anteriorly and inferiorly. So these skiffies can be subtle. Uh, and, uh, and this was actually a, a reverse skiffy in this particular patient. But you can see the offset uh, along where the, the fecio scar is. Okay, uh, Robert. All right, so we have a 43-year-old female with acute left hip pain. Looks like there's some, definitely some degenerative change of the left hip with some uh, femoral head neck junction osteophytes and uh, looks like a deep acetabulum there, kind of bilaterally. Yeah, you can see, I think, a little bit of protrusio acetabuli on both sides. Mm -hmm. And here's what the MR scan looks like. Probably coxa vera on both sides. Yeah. So what do you see here on the MR? Um, here, yeah, some coxa vera, some degenerative changes, some acetabular overcoverage bilaterally. Yeah. And then again, you can see the protrusio here on that medial wall of the acetabular on both sides. And uh, this is. Are we to uh, assume uh, that this? Are we to assume that this patient has a short leg on the left side? Uh, I don't know, John. I don't know how much is position and rotation here. Well, I, I right, I don't either. Yeah. So, but uh, bilateral protrusio with degenerative changes like this is often called an auto pelvis. Okay, uh, Elior. Okay, twelve-year-old right hip pain for a month. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, maybe on that lateral view of the femur, there's there's bowing of the of the femoral diaphysis? Is that the finding? No. Okay. If I was to say the oh. I think I say the arrow where it's supposed to be the problem. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's widening of the growth plate uh under the uh right femoral epiphysis. So yes. could this be a Salter Paris uh hmm. Would this be a Salter Harris classification? Like, um... well, it is, but 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 this is Skiffy, right? This is oh Skiffy, okay. And, and here you can see the normal positioning of the uh, epiphysis with respect to the neck, and here you can see the the uh, displacement of the epiphysis, uh, where you have a, a defect here, and you got uh, over, uh, you know, rotation and the. Epiphysis projects inferior to the distal or to, to the proximal uh, neck over here. You can see a lot of irregularity of the neck as opposed to the normal side over here. Uh, so this is a pretty typical appearance of slip capital femoral epiphysis. Well, the, the main thing is what you're showing right now. I, um, 
the head is uh, below the neck, the AP projection. So this is an easy one to diagnose. Yeah, and just to kind of look at what the normal looks like, and this is what a, a pretty severe skiffy looks like. Uh, and then... <laughs> how, how old was this patient? I, I, I didn't see 12. that. 12. 12. Okay, that, that, that's about right. Yeah. And then and here soccer we... Soccer player. That, that, and, the, and the obliques here we can see skiffy and the normal. And then here's the MR scan. And with the MR we also see the edema within the bone. We can see that slipped couple femoral epiphysis here, edema within the bone uh, uh, on either side of the growth plate. And just further examples in the axial plane of the slippage. And it was fixed by two screws. Yeah, the fixation looks good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Robert? Yeah, so we have a 55-year-old with left hip pain. And let's see. Looks like that left hip uh, is almost dislocated. There's a large joint effusion, some acetabular undercoverage. So I think it's dysplastic. And... Right over there. Yeah. Do you think or you know? Yeah. Uh, I know. Yeah. And you can see you. a lot of bony changes of the acetabulum. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Elior. Okay, 29-year-old, coccygeal pain, question of fracture, uh, elevated lymphocytes, lab vaginal delivery five months ago appendectomy two months ago, scoliosis. Um, bone scan, we see increased uptake uh, along the SI joints. Yeah. And the SI joints are the radiograph. Yeah, we see uh, sclerosis on the uh, ileal side. MR, yeah, there's edema along those SI joints bilaterally. Then what do you think? Um, yeah, given the recent uh, vaginal delivery, I, I think it's a like a stress injury of the SI joints. Yeah. Osteo uh, yeah. What's it called? Osteitis condensans uh, which is really a stress injury from birth trauma. Good. Okay, uh, Robert. Uh, so we have chronic hip pain. Did did, did anyone text Tayson? Uh, I think he's here now. So, oh, I, yeah. I, oh, I'm sorry, Tayson. I didn't see. Oh, there you are. Okay, I had to, you I had you hidden up here on my screen. Tayson, why don't you take this one? All right. Um. So there's some atrophy of the quadratus femoris. Um, yeah, looks like uh, ischial femoral impingement with edema and atrophy of the quadratus femoris muscle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see how the edema down in through here. Good. Okay, so. Uh, uh, here's a 58-year-old female with left hip pain for three months. Here's a more, a little bit more of a severe example where we can see marked narrowing between the uh, femur and the ischium and the uh, hamstring origin here with thinning of the muscle in a in edema. So, uh, so what you look for with ischial femoral impingement is narrowing of the ischial femoral space, also narrowing of the quadratus femoris space, 
and quadratus femoris edema. So do I have yeah. So here is the ischiofemoral space is bone to bone and the uh quadratus femoris space is from the femur over to the uh uh quad tendon. <laughs> And very often it's a quadratus femoris space, which is really the main culprit in uh, what's called issue of femoral impingement. So I'd kind of look at both of those. Uh, okay. Uh, Robert, what do you think of this? All right. So here we have a 79-year-old male with left hip pain. And on the left, it looks like there's some narrowing of that ischiofemoral distance. Um, yeah, so that's the ischiofemoral distance. The main narrowing here is the quadratus femoris distance, mm -hmm. and it's worse on the left than on the right. Yeah. Right, and you look for edema. There's not much edema here, but uh, this is really uh, quite severe. And this patient was symptomatic. See other images. We can actually see that it's bilateral, which is common. This is much more common in females than males because the the uh, female pelvis is wider uh, congenitally than than male pelvises, but you can see it in both sexes. Further examples of bilateral issue of femoral impingement with narrowing of the quadratus femoris spaces on both sides. Yeah. Okay, issue of femoral impingement. Yeah. So in this particular study, they they didn't call it unless there's edema in the quadratus muscle. Though I think sometimes you'll see atrophy and long-standing disease without edema. So I don't require edema uh, if if the morphology is appropriate and the symptoms are appropriate. Sometimes you get partial tears and fatty infiltrations when you get edema within the muscle due to the to the impingement. How often do you see this, John? Uh, it's not rare. It's uh, fairly common. Guys, how often do you think you see it? Robert? Yeah, I agree quite a bit. Yeah, same here. Because yeah, it's at least once a week, but we don't breathe too many deaths, I don't think. Yeah. So you have to look for it or it's easy to, to miss. And then there's just a, a other article showing in the literature the appearance of quadratus femoris and uh, issue of femoral impingement. And it's just a study where they looked at the measurements and uh, affected subjects tend to have an issue of femoral space between around 13 and 7, whereas control subjects, it was more 23 and 12. Uh, I, I, I generally don't use these numbers, uh, but, but they are in the literature. If you want them, typically look at the edema pattern and just the deformity of the, of the muscle. Okay. Uh, Elior. Okay, we have a 61-year-old male, right hip pain, numbness, and mass. Mm. In the right hip, um, not, okay, so that looks like Okay. Oh, so that's, is that the, uh, one of the pubic yes. rami? Looks... This is the anterior pubic ramus on the right side there. Uh huh. And uh, here is the left side, which is normal. There's the right side, which is abnormal. Compare the two. And on the left side, we have no impingement. On the right side, you have Mark narrowing of the issue of femoral space and edema within the quadratus muscle. So, what do you think this is? Mm, I mean, could this have been a fracture that 
that um, that's well, no, that's kind of pretty big. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure why why it's so big. This is probably a. Uh, it's blocking. Uh, this is, this is really a dysplastic cartilage lesion with overgrowth of the bone in that location. Um, I'm blanking on the name. What's the name if you have a, a cartilage outgrowth of the bone and you look for the cartilage cap? Uh, osteochondroma. Yeah, that's it. This is probably a sessile osteochondroma which led to this. And uh, so, uh, Taysen, what do you think of this case? So it looks like so we, we have a large osseous uh, exostosis there. Yeah, exostosis. That's the word I was looking for. And we can see it here, except this time it's on the femoral side. It has a typical x-ray appearance of uh, osteochondroma or exostosis. It just happens to be at a point where it uh, can be compressing that uh, isthmal space. Okay. Uh, Robert. All right, so we have a 29-year-old female um, looking at that right ischial truck enteric space. I think that's probably looks like a fluid collection. So maybe some bursitis or okay. yeah, basically bursitis. Yeah. Ischial truck enteric bursitis. Good. Uh, is it uh, uh Elira? Yeah. Yeah. Um <clears throat> Hmm. So we have a young patient here. Um, okay. So in the region where the, I would expect to see the lesser trochanter. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, this was an emulsion fracture of the lesser trochanter in a subacute phase. You have the axial images showing the separation and the hemorrhage and edema around the area. And here you can see the adductor muscles attached here and the avulsion of the bone. And that's what the x-ray looked like. Normal on the right side, the avulsed lesser tuberosity on the left. Okay, Taysen. All right, 16, uh, 16 year old male, six weeks post injury. So I do see edema in the region of where I think the iliopsoas tendon should be uh, on the right. Yeah, maybe some iliopsoas bursitis and yeah, maybe some traction injury to this greater trochanter as well. Okay. Here are the sagittal image right through this area. That's where the pain is located. Yep. Looks like the iliosoas tendons attracted and balled up right there. So be worried about an avulsion too. Yeah. And yeah. X-ray. It's so another lesser tuberosity avulsion. Yeah. Okay, uh, Robert. All right, so this says basketball injury. Um, not sure I see anything acute. Oh, here on the MR, it looks like there's a lot of edema in that uh, medial aspect of the acetabulum. Yeah, with probably hemorrhage into the joint space. Mm -hmm. Right. So here I just think that just maybe the syndesmosis there. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. In this case, that was actually a fracture. So the MR scan really uh, solves the, the issue pretty definitively. We can see all the edema within the bone here. Okay. Uh, uh, Taysen. All right. So this, uh, this is the initial this is the initial presentation. This is acts after relocating the hip. Okay. So there is yeah, still some widening of that um left hip joint, but I wonder if it's from def uh an effusion. Um can I ask a question here? Go ahead, John. On the x-ray, if you look, um, would you say this was a posterior or anterior dislocation? Anterior, as you know, or rare. Yeah, this is well, not rare, but not uncommon. I think there but might be not very common. some rotation of that uh, left femur, too, just based on the appearance of the greater choke canner. Yeah, that, that's a posterior dislocation because you cannot see the lesser trochanter. Now, um, that's one way to tell that it's posterior. Uh, the leg is internally rotated. Thank you, John. Now, uh, uh, as far as the, uh, the, the joint, uh, now, uh, I'll let you continue, John. Uh, okay. All right. So here's the MR scan. Yeah. Well, I think on X-ray, you, you you can assume that there's something between the head and the acetabulum, not right. allowing it to stay where it's supposed to be after a reduction. Right. Which is not uncommon, and. Uh, Although I haven't seen very many of these because I've, I've reduced my share of them. In fact, I, I, I developed a technique to do it so that's not difficult to reduce. But anyway, uh, even on x-ray, you, you assume that there's something between the head and the acetabulum. There was an orthopedic surgeon at USC that thought every dislocation should be operated on. Well, you know, with what I totally disagreed, uh, yeah. but this one here, uh, I think uh, I would operate on. Yeah. So they got the MR scan. You can see that there's a transverse ligament was torn and displaced under the joint space here, as well as a portion of the labrum. And you can follow it up. Okay. Now, whether uh, this could be done arthroscopically or open, I'm not uh, that uh, right into uh, uh, arthroscopes in my career. So, uh, as far as hips go, yeah, I, I suppose you could do it arthroscopically. Yeah, I don't know if you could repair the transverse ligament arthroscopically or not. I don't know. Uh, Elior. A 20 year old collegiate golfer with hip pain. Um, is this an arthrogram? Yes. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, looking at that anterior labrum, I see contrast going through the base. I'd call that a tear. Yeah. And if we go to the sagittal images, we can see it goes to the to the anterior labrum as well. So this was a labral tear. Good. Okay, uh, Robert. <laughs> All right, so we have a nine-year-old male who fell skiing, hyperflexion, direct impact injury, severe pain, and negative x-rays. Uh, here looking at the, uh, the ischiofemoral ligament, looks like there's some increased signal, maybe some discontinuity some adjacent edema. Yeah. Yeah, so this patient was dislocated and and uh, 
uh, had to tear the ligament from the dislocation. And uh, the, you know, there's a debate about whether these dislocations are highly associated with uh, AVN or not. Uh, my guess is some of these are associated with fractures of the femoral head, which can't be seen very well on plain radiographs, uh, but the, those we can see nicely on an MR. So if there's a lot of edema within the femoral head, uh, that's something that may have to be addressed in the management of the patient. I um, and I I reduced probably between ten and fifteen of these, uh, which is a pretty high number for one orthopod. Yeah, and uh, I never seen a case of avian. Great, but that's that's uh, anecdotal, really. Yeah, good. Okay, uh... it does occur, but not very commonly. Okay. Um, I forgot who's next. Is it Elior? Yeah, sure. Um, nine-year-old fell skiing, hyperflexion, direct impact. Um, hmm. Similar to that other case, there seems to be widening of that acetabular growth plate. Okay. Here's the <clears throat> MR scan. In this case, that growth plate doesn't look too bad on on MR. Right. What we see is a lot of posterior soft tissue injury uh, back here. Yeah. Could this have been? Yeah, dislocation. Okay. It's a hip dislocation and a tear of the posterior capsule. Mm. Okay, Robert. All right, so we have a 51-year-old male presented after anterior dislocation of the right hip while playing sports. There's a lot of edema anterior to the joint space, and then that femoral hip posteriorly, there's a lot of edema with a contour defect and impaction injury back there. So it looks like a hill sacs lesion mm -hmm. and that anterior labral tear, right? Yep. Yeah. And in this case, a strain of the uh, direct head of the rectus femoris. And here's a patient who had recurrent posterior dislocations, and we can see a uh, uh, deficiency of the posterior capsule. And in this case, we can see displacement of the labrum. Okay, uh, Tayson. All right. Um, MVA. So I don't see any fracture through the visualized iliac bones or the femur. So there is some calcification, yeah, where the ligamentum teres is. Good. Presumably post-traumatic. Okay, Elior. Okay, 42-year-old male. Um, yeah, looking at that ligament teres, there's increased signal there that's asymmetric. Um, yeah. Could be a, yeah, a sprain or yeah, partial tear. Yeah, it was a partial tear. Proven arthroscopically of the ligamentum teres. Okay, Robert. All right, here I think we have a 39-year-old with left hip pain. And again, on the bottom two images, it looks like there's some increased signal in that ligamentum teres on the left. So I'd be concerned about partial tear or sprain. Right. 
And we go to the axial images, we can also see the same edema there. Thickening with edema and the ligamentum teres. And further images confirming that. Good. Yeah, probably. I don't I know. I'm sure that thanks, John, that there's more injury than just the terrorist terror when that happens. There there can be. Uh, uh, you certainly have to look for uh, injuries of the transverse ligament in the capsule and the labrum, but sometimes it can be just uh, ligamentum teres injury. But you certainly have to look carefully for the others. And the kind of symptoms you have with ligamentum teres stains, you get intraarticular hip pain. Uh, it can be created with or without dislocation. It can be complete partial or just degenerative. And you tend to get symptoms of flexion and adduction and external rotation. And here are just some examples in uh, the literature. Okay. Uh, I forgot who's next. It's me. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't think there is any acetabular over coverage. There might be some convexity to the anterior superior femoral head neck junction and a shallow defect there. Uh, yeah, is the ligamentum teres a little amorphous and increasing? Yeah, I think it may be a little bit here. And then, let's see. There. And then uh, they went in. Arthroscopically, uh, this is uh, supposedly a markedly degenerated uh, ligamentum teres here. Here's another case where you can see a partial tear of the ligamentum teres, and it's kind of splayed. The fiber is a little bit splayed arthroscopically there. And this is from. Uh, Spain, and they say it can be very similar to mucodegenerative disease that we see in the ACL. Okay, Elior. Okay, 24 year old male, right hip pain after Taiwanese Thai massage. Um, <clears> hmm. <throat> Is that all? Not. Okay. Well, on the MR, there's edema in that superior acetabulum. Um, yeah. The. Yeah, just a, yeah, edema there. I yeah, could it be a contusion? Um, yes. The Terry's ligament, there's intersubstance signal within that, looks like complete tear. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and bone injury. Okay. Not some kind of a massage. Yeah, no kidding. But remind me not yes, to sir. get one. Yeah, right. Uh, Robert. All right, so we have a 30-year-old female runner with chronic growing pain. Uh, there's a, is this an arthrogram or is that joint effusion? I think it's an arthrogram. Okay. Uh, it looks like there's irregularity and increased signal that ligamentum teres, uh, some partial thickness tearing, I suspect. Right. And here, oh, here's a CT arthrogram. You can see the contrast extending into the partial tear of the ligamentum teres. Mm -hmm. And at surgery, you can see a torn ligamentum teres. And they repaired it. And a labral detachment. Okay, Tayson. All right, slip down a hill with a heavy load. C 
see some edema inferior to that femoral head there. Could this be a good transverse ligament? There's a normal on that side. Right. So that's uh, and here we can see it down here. Admiral and the edema within it and the sagittal PD fat set. There's the tear of that transverse ligament. Good. Okay, Eliora. Okay, 61 year old male with left hip pain and clicking. Um, yeah, we're looking at that transverse ligament again. Looks thickened. Um, T1 and T2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, low grade sprain maybe. But it looks intact on the uh, uh, sagittal PD fat sat. Huh. Um, yeah, lots of it edema there, chronic tear, okay. Wait a second, I don't remember this case. That's a, that's a very, very stiff yeah. um, entity. So you have have segment. considerable yeah. force to get that injured yeah I, th I think this was a yeah a chronic tear i don't think it was intact okay okay uh robert all right we have a 31 year old with acute onset hip pain three weeks ago question of a loose body and it does look like there's a well corticated osseous fragment there yeah uh, not sure if that's a loose body or an avulsion fracture of some sort. Here it looks like it's more of an avulsive injury of that anterior acetabulum. Now, does it look acute or not? Uh, I mean, there is some edema in that fragment, so maybe, nah, maybe yeah, not. Pretty, pretty sharply defined here. So this was an old fracture. Yeah. With the, I, I would think so. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, Tayson. All right, looking at the left superior femoral head neck junction, there's focal marrow edema there. Uh, yeah. okay. that, that, this was a prior injury. That might still have edema, I'm not sure. Okay, uh, Elior. A 34-year-old female with hip pain two weeks after a fall. Um, yeah, I see a demon at superior acetabulum. Um, Maybe that ligamentum teres I'd be a little worried about too. Mm -hmm. This is 121509. There we can see the acetabular edema. And now we uh, jump up. Uh, like five months ahead, and this is what it looks like. Hmm. The edema's improved, um, but there is maybe a small uh, defect in the cartilage uh, with some subchondral edema. Yeah. Yeah. It's still symptomatic here on the T2. You can probably see it best. The Fissure in there, take the cartilage in the other line, underlying subchondral cyst in there. So it's now a chronic, more of a chronic injury. So this is kind of acute to chronic osteochondral injury. Yeah, it, it looked like a chip fracture to yeah. me. Okay, uh, uh, Robert. All right, so we have a 14-year-old with sports injury rule out femoral neck fracture. Uh, let's see, the femoral head itself looks okay, but the posterior acetabulum looks like there's a fracture back there, mildly displaced, and a lot of surrounding soft tissue edema. Right. Yep. So 
an unstable fracture. And here's an old acetabular fracture with an os acetabuli here uh, next to it. Okay, so some questions here. Uh, Tayson, what is the value of steroid injections in patients with osteoarthritis-related hip pain? Uh, I imagine it's not super helpful. Osteoarthritis. Uh, in this particular patient, they looked at both short and long-term intervals, short being you know, a few weeks and long-term being six months, and they, they found no significant improvement in patients with st steroid injections in the hip for chronic osteoarthritis. Okay, uh, uh, El uh, Elior. Okay, 23-year-old. NHL player with severe pain, rule out of sports hernia, distal rectus tear. Um, so here we see edema uh, on either side of the pubic symphysis. Um, with a little yeah, osteolysis here as well mm. of, the, of the subchondral bone there, a little mm -hmm. osteophyte here. But you can see that some of the bone has been resorbed here from erosive changes from chronic repetitive uh, kind of instability from trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, some people call this symphysis pubitis. This is in the, one, of the, uh, one of the findings in the category of core muscle injury that we are evaluate. So when we look for kind of pubic pain, groin pain, uh, we, we look for Injuries to the symphysis pubis. We look for avulsion injuries of the adductor tendons. We look for avulsion injuries of the distal uh, rectus abdominis tendon insertions. And also, you can have hernias, true hernias, uh, or soft tissue injuries uh, uh, adjacent to the rectus abdominis muscle, which are more proximal in these locations. Uh, in these particular patients. Uh, so the, the, that's what we're looking for, traumatic injuries to the bone or soft tissue, basically, in this region of the body. It's very common in some sports, such as hockey. Okay, and here's... Well, the, the word uh, um, hernia uh, came from trainers. Yeah, yeah. And the, the vast majority of these are not hernias, though there are uh, some of the early descriptions were in, in patients who did have uh, hernias uh, a little bit more approximately, but they were really more muscle uh, uh, tears at the syndesmosis of the muscles and they're around the distal rectus femoris. And occasionally you get herniations through there, but but those are not the common cause for this. And here again, we see uh, tra repetitive traumatic injury to the symphysis pubis. This is just another example where what we see is fluid within the symphysis pubis, marked thickening of the capsule, uh, which could also be seen uh, with this condition. Uh, I forgot who's next. I think it's me. Okay. All right, 43-year-old male runner, rock climber. A lot of sports hernia. So there's definitely capsular hypertrophy of the symphysis pubis, maybe some resorption in that left uh, pubis there. And is that a secondary cleft sign? Maybe a. Ooh, we'll get to that later. I don't see a secondary cleft sign here right now. Okay. Okay. So again, here you can see the erosive changes here from the chronic repetitive trauma and instability involving the symphysis pubis. Okay, Elior. A 32-year-old female marked pelvic pain after recent vaginal delivery of a large baby, inability to adduct thighs, rule out structural abnormality. Um, yeah, so we see widening of the pubic symphysis here. Um, 
maybe capsular injury. Yeah. Yeah. So this is called postpartum diastasis. It's basically a tear of the capsule with instability of the pelvic ring uh, due to this. Okay. Uh, Robert, a little, a little more subtle case. We have a 33-year-old female one day after vaginal delivery, and there's a fair amount of diastasis of so that pubic symphysis again. Yeah. So uh, I think this comes from a paper. I'm, I think I talked about it last time to show that if we look for soft tissue injuries, uh, uh, they're... Uh, commonly seen with fractures and without fractures, soft tissue injury as a cause of pain in this area is, is very common uh, in, in hip, hip pain. Uh, I think we know the anatomy here. And one area of the hip that gets kind of confusing is that there are a whole host of different muscles here. Uh, which allow uh, very fine control over hip movements, and uh, uh, tears of these of these muscles are not uncommon uh, in dealing with uh, uh, injuries in this area for, from sports. There are also variations. Yeah. Yes. Of the anatomy. Yeah. Uh, who's next? I've forgotten. It's me. Okay. All right. It looks like a lot of edema within the left femoral head and neck. I think maybe the contour of the femoral head is a little collapsed superiorly. And we see uh, some curvilinear high signal on the right femoral head as well. Yeah. So I don't know why this is here. So this looks like AVF on the right, probably more severe with some collapse on the left. Patient is not really doing a lot of ambulating. And, uh, well. Uh -oh. Okay, I guess we're going to find the gluteus. The last one. Gluteus. So, uh, so here we can see AVN, uh, but a, a common cause, as you guys already know, of uh, hip pain in the acute setting are tears of the gluteus muscles, but more commonly partial tears of the tendon insertions. And uh, this is a common cause of, of hip pain and peripelvic pain in older individuals, uh, because especially those who have severe atrophy of the muscles. Uh, they can try to catch themselves before they fall and produce muscle tears or bony fractures. And as you all know, this is a... Uh, common problem in, in the elderly who, who have muscle atrophy and uh, uh, and are highly associated with early death. So uh, so this is a muscle tears in a patient who had muscle atrophy with also AVN and probably a, a fracture of that left hip. Okay, uh, Elior, what do you think of this case? bilateral hip pain. Right, so here, looking at the gluteal muscles on the right, their severe atrophy, uh, maybe a retraction of a tendon as well with, with scarring there. Yeah, and this is a T1. We can see that there is something here and something there, maybe a fluid in the bursa. When you go to the PD fat sat images, you can see how much better we can see that atrophy on the non-fat suppressed images because the fat is such a great contrast agent in the musculoskeletal system. And here we see tendon edema bilaterally, uh, which, as you know, is extremely common in uh, middle-aged and older individuals, especially women who have uh, hip pain. And these are... Uh, this was a, a woman. Yeah. And here we see a can see that from the X-ray, partial tear and uh, and uh, fluid in the trochanteric bursa on both sides. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that fat comes out very clearly. Yeah. 
And again, you can see marked muscle atrophy. And this muscle atrophy like this is highly associated with muscle pain, highly associated with, uh, with falls because of the weakness. Uh, let me see. Well, uh, why don't we stop here and we'll pick up at this point uh, on Thursday, okay? We'll see All you right. on Thursday. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good couple of days, guys. You too. Thank you, you too.